I'm Dick, uh, Dick Taylor. I was born in Indianapolis, Indiana in 1926, and I uh, first learned to uh, ride a bike when I was 12 years old. And when it came about, I didn't own a bike of my own, but a buddy that I ran, ran around with by the name of Burl Schilling, uh, who's probably about, uh, uh, still kicking around, but anyway, uh, Burl had a brother, Bob, and Bob had a bike, that, uh, and Burl had one too. But Bob uh, taught me how to ride the bike for, the, uh, for a ulterior motive. I didn't know it at the time. But the real reason he wanted me to learn to ride a bike was because Bob had a small uh, business of his own. Uh, where he d uh, developed and processed film. And uh, it, the film uh, was gathered or uh, turned in at various uh, drugstores around the uh, area. And so Bob wanted not only me, but Burl to be able to go and pick up his uh, film so he could make a living, such as it was. And... Uh, of course, we also uh, learned to develop uh, print pictures at the same time because the, uh, when Bob got a swamp or got behind, we, uh, Bro and I made uh, cheap labor because <laughs> I don't remember we ever got much for a candy bar uh, now and then and, or a uh, quarter to go, uh, for the two of us to, to go to the show with. But. Anyway, that was basically it. Uh, I, he, he let me ride, uh, started me off uh, uh, sitting on the bike and the usual things. And I didn't have training wheels or anything. And I gathered quite a few uh, scratches and bang, bumps and bruises from uh, falling off the bike in, in, the, in the alleys uh, in, in Annapolis. Where we live, we're all paved, so we, uh, that's and that's generally where I first started, and then eventually he allowed me to go out and try traffic, and so I learned to, to be able to go pick up the film and bring it back. Okay, and that's essentially all that was involved in learning my learning to ride a bike. But like I say, nobody else had ever bothered trying to teach me. <laughs> so, so, so you mentioned that that you're. Uh family had had bikes or what, 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 well, what yeah, did your family we accumulated uh, shortly after uh, we moved from that place we, we accumulated a couple of bikes one that was given to us uh, that had no fenders no chain guard uh, it was uh, the brakes were very iffy sometimes they were coaster brakes and sometimes you would uh, spin uh, try to break the bike and your pedals would spin around backwards, <laughs> and uh, just various things like that. And uh, Brother Bill had, did have a bike that Grandma had bought for him. As I remember, it was a, about a nine-dollar bike from Sears Roebuck. But uh, and I know she bought my. Uh, uh, cousins, uh, uh, one of my cousins, a bike, and uh, that lived with her, L Lillian, and Lillian was visiting, and I remember one time we, uh, expo uh, we uh, grabbed her bike and stole it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so uh, the uh, another cousin that was also visiting, and three of us could uh, have. Uh, something to ride on. We rode double. Riding double was quite a common practice when how, I was how, how, how do you ride double? It, well, you could ride uh, on the crossbar or you could uh, uh, sit on the handlebars and uh, straddle the front wheel. Uh, and you had no place to put your feet, but you just straddle them out. And, uh, sometimes you'd ride, uh, if the kid had a uh, uh, rack that was sometimes on the back of the bike, uh, over the over the rear fender, you could sit on that and ride double. 
there were a number of ways you could do it. Uh, occasionally, kid like, uh, we, we did a lot of those things, you know. And of course, th we're talking about a time of depression when the country was in a very serious depression and there were more poor, poor people around than there were people that could afford to buy bicycles. So bicycles were less, well, they were not a sport in the sense that they, they usually had to be some utilitarian use for a bike back then. Like, what, like well, what kind of uses? Well, uh, for example, my Uncle Jim, he, he rode a bike as long as I could remember it. Right. And he uh, uh, used his bike for hauling bales of hay. He used his bike for uh, carrying uh, bags of uh, grain, uh, chicken feed, things like that. Uh, he rode, uh, whenever I went with him, I always rode on the crossbar of the uh, bike. Uh, and we'd often uh, go five, six, seven miles on, on the bike. And I can tell you one thing, a crossbar of a bike is not a comfortable seat. No. <laughs> Your rear end gets very pain, <laughs> sore and very pain. Uh, and uh, I remember that I took... Uh, uh, would go off and go with uh, Uncle Jim to uh, to the uh, uh, where he caught the bus to go to work at Anderson, and I would ride with him. But then I uh, all the way there, which was about three miles. But then I didn't get to ride the bike back. I got to uh, walk back to to my grandmother's. So why didn't he give you the bike to ride back? Well, because you didn't touch his bike unless he, he wanted to. The only, uh, well, it, this is a, uh, an incident. Uh, he brought home two uh, goslings and that grew into big uh, goose poopy machines. And I hated those go uh, gos uh, goslings. And... Uh, one of them, he brought home a bale of hay once, or it was bale of hay or loose hay that he had acquired somewhere, and the one goose reached up and pulled uh, uh, on the uh, hay and pulled the bike over on him and broke his neck. That was the most enjoyable job, eating that goose. That <laughs> uh, it, it was... I, it, that was a sweet revenge because I had cleaned up after those goslings so many times from the time we got them until they grew into full-size uh, geese. And so, yeah, uh, but like I say, I, I have had very limited experiences with riding bikes. I've rode more horses than I've ridden bikes. <laughs> so did Tell me about that derby in Indianapolis. Oh, uh, okay. In 1938, uh, we were living uh, in Indianapolis. This is about the time I learned to ride a bike. And uh, there was a craze going, I don't know, I think it was uh, across the country. They, they started these marathons to see how, how long and how fast you could ride a given number of miles. In this, in the city, in, in within the city uh, cities, and uh, w we had ours. Uh, neighbor, uh, neighborhood uh, got involved to the extent that people brought us food, so uh, so those of us who were riding the bikes could uh, be fed. What, what, what kind of food did they bring you? Oh, uh, they they br uh, bring us uh, sandwiches and. Uh, uh, occasionally somebody would bring us uh, uh, something that uh, was hot, like soup or something like that. And, uh, of course, we, there, there was always cookies and uh, stuff like that that we... Uh, and we actually had this organized. I think, if I remember, our group lasted three days before... And we suddenly came to a screeching halt when 
one of the fathers of another marathon that was being conducted showed up. He was making the rounds of all of the places that were having marathons. And uh, the whole front of his shirt was co uh, covered with his son's blood. Uh, and he, his son had, uh, had been hit by a car and killed. And he was going around begging us to quit. And the first reaction was, well, that's not going to happen to us. But as people began to think about it, they started drifting away from the, and it just sort of died of its own, uh, you know, by strictly by attrition. Nobody was had any real interest in it after that. Wow. So that, that was about the extent of it. What was biking in Chicago or Indianapolis on the streets like then for cycling? Well, uh, there were, there were uh, when you rode a bike on the street, uh, streets, uh, you technically you just washed out to make sure you didn't uh, run into a car or, and that usually you didn't necessarily stop for stop signs, but it, if it looked clear, you sped up a little and shot across the intersection and that sort of thing. But basically, you just uh, do as they do now. You just, the, the bikes in those days were old clunkers by today's standards. You could buy a bike uh, from Sears Catalog for 10 or $12 easy, and that was a very nice bike. For thirty-five or forty dollars, you were getting the Cadillac of the bikes at that time. So the, most the, <laughs> most of the bikes had things like uh, um, some of them uh, had, between the crossbars. They'd have uh, uh, I remember one that had uh, a, like a box or a, it, was, it, it was superfluous. It wasn't. It had no function other than the decoration. The fenders were usually uh, were painted many different colors. You had a wide selection of colors. Uh, most uh, bikes were built with a chain guard, so you, uh, so that you didn't wind up getting your uh, uh, pant leg caught. It's very painful to get your uh, pants leg or pant, uh, cuff caught in a. Uh, bicycle chain because it usually is, it leads to a catastrophe but and you got many bumps and bruises a lot of kids would fall off their bikes and break their arms and that sort of thing but anyway that's that was basically what bike riding was my youth so 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 there there's this time when you and Uncle Russ. Oh and yeah, Uncle the, the, the the time we took uh, so uh, how, how did that start? <laughs> well, it started because uh, William, uh, our cousin William, uh, had come to visit and was living uh, or uh, staying with us. And my cousin Dale, uh, who tried to spend a, a week or two with us each summer, uh, came over from Sheridan, Indiana, and we went out and we were going to go. Uh, we took Lillian's bike, was to her protest, and we went to, we were going to go fishing down at this uh, fishing hole that we had in Stony Creek, and uh, as one of the things was is that when you went into the, uh, went onto the path leading back to, the, to our fishing hole, uh, there was a steep drop off on the other side. I was, I was riding double. Uh, on a bike, they, I would so, fail, so. and then uh, I'm trying to remember, let's see. And then, uh, anyway, Bill went through, uh, and Russ was on the old beat up bike that had no brakes. And Bill went between him and the fence, and there wasn't room for both of them. And Bill managed to knock Russ off of the uh, bike. And he hit about one time before he landed in the creek, which was right down below us. And of course, he got very little sympathy because we were laughing so hilariously at, at the way he bounced off the middle of the hill and it went into the creek. 
Of course, he didn't share our humor at all. So, we, but yeah, that, that's a, one of our Viking experiences. But uh, and that was sort of typical too. I mean, little adventures of, of that sort. Riding that bike that was given to us was something else. Uh, you stop the bike by putting your foot between the uh, tire, uh, front tire and the frame, and uh, which was painful, <laughs> but it's the only a break you had sometimes, or you just fell off of it. <laughs> uh, so that was, unfortunately, my experience with bicycles. And what, what year was that? Uh, well, that was... Top 39, somewhere along.